As you might have guessed, today's video is about the decline of the old Liberal Party. To begin with, the UK Liberal Party was one of the oldest political parties in existence, dating back to 1859. They were one of two parties that contested control of the UK Parliament from the 1850s till around World War I. The popularity of the Liberal Party steadily declined after the UK's 1906 general election, which was actually a Liberal landslide, winning 397 of the 670 seats available in the House of Commons. While this victory meant they had 200 more seats than their greatest rivals, the Conservative Party, it also masked some of the first signs of their decline. For a start, the Liberals only got so many seats because they made an electoral alliance with the still very new Labour Party, which would be the party in future to supplant them as opposition to the Conservatives. Fast forward to 1910-1912, where the evidence of the party's decline is becoming more obvious. They tried to introduce something called the People's Budget, which would have increased taxes on the wealthy in order to create a national pension scheme and some other social protection like unemployment benefits, as well as to pay for a very expensive naval arms race with Germany, um, building the new Dreadnought-class battleship. The House of Lords had stood in the way of this, and their opposition was only ended after the Liberals won two general elections in the same year, and the King threatened to flood the Lords with Liberal peers if the Conservative Lords didn't back down. This also led to the Parliament Act of 1911, which effectively stopped the Lords being able to kill legislation, they could now only delay it. While the Liberals won the battle over the people's budget, the damage to the party was immense. They now only controlled 272 seats in the House of Commons, only one more than the Conservative Party, and they were reduced to a minority government dependent on the Irish National Party to pass legislation, and what they wanted to pass was Irish Home Rule, which wasn't exactly a vote winner in the rest of mainland Britain. But before there was another election, World War I broke out. While initially it was just the regular Liberal government that led the UK into World War I, led by Herbert Asquith, after a munitions crisis in 1915 and several other scandals in the middle of the war, the, another Liberal, Lloyd George, supplanted Asquith and became leader of a unity government, which included members of the Conservative Party and even some from the Labour Party. When the war ended, a general election was called, but for the first time, all men over 21 could vote, and women over 30, and this was the first time women could vote in any UK election, could vote. This created some problems for the Liberal Party, as they were used to appealing towards a more smaller middle-class electorate, and the Labour Party was well, well placed to take advantage of the working class franchise. The Conservative Party actually decided to keep the national government going with the help of Lloyd George's Liberals, which meant there was a Liberal Prime Minister between 1918 and 1922, but this masked the massive decline. The Liberals had won a combined total of 163 MPs, but only 127 of these were coalition Liberals, and 36 were Liberals loyal to Asquith. This allowed the Labour Party, with 57 seats, to become Her Majesty's, well, His Majesty's at the time, sorry, official op opposition, which granted them more prestige and exposure than ever before. And uh, to people that don't know what that is, the official opposition is basically a sort of shadow government that you declare who your ministers would be and what you would do. Uh, so in the 1923 general election, uh, I skipped one there, but, you know, it, it, it's not all as important. In the 1923 general election, the Liberal Party reunified, but they still came third to Labour, with 191 Liberal seats to 158. Uh, no, sorry, 191 Labour seats to 158 Liberal seats. And from that point on, they were firmly the third party of British politics. The party continued to decline having less than 60 MPs by the 1930s and almost disappearing in the 1950s when they only had 10 MPs, most of these MPs hanging on in the so-called Celtic fringe of Wales and Scotland. The party revived in the polls under the leadership of Jeremy Thorpe in the 1970s, but that didn't translate into actually many more seats, I think 14 being the best haul in that period. In the 1980s, the Liberal Party went on to form an alliance with the SDP and then would merge to become the Liberal Democrats while a small core of the old Liberal Party members founded the Liberal Party 1989. It's actually just called the Liberal Party, but people tend to call it that to distinguish it from the old Liberal Party. But and this party is much smaller, and it mainly just contests council seats in the North West, and it actually has occasionally stood aside for UKIP candidates, as the Liberals are very Eurosceptic. 